So, uh, guys, it's been several years. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but seeing as how we are at the end of 2020, going into 2021, given everything we've seen throughout this year and everything we can come to expect going forward, uh, I, I think it's time to update this particular video. This video, of course, as you can tell by the title, The Five Guns You Need for Shit Hit the Fan, or maybe a civil war maybe a cold civil war, maybe just an ideological civil war, or more importantly the guns that I think you should have based on what is going on politically in this country and how I feel going forward with where the left and the anti-gunners stand when it comes to them being in positions of power and their intentions that they've made very clear when it comes to gun rights. We know that Joe Biden is not pro-gun. We know Kamala Harris is not pro-gun. And quite honestly, as of this point, when I'm making this video, which is just a week before Christmas 2020, uh, I don't have faith that the Georgia runoff elections will go towards the Republicans. Uh, I may just be being pessimistic, and hopefully I'm wrong. We'll see here in about two to three weeks. But I think there's a very good chance that uh, going into 2021, that the Democrats, the anti-gunners, the left will control the presidency, the Senate, and the House. And that's very dangerous if you're a gun owner and care about your gun rights. And so that's why I want to make this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different categories, the five different categories that I think you should have covered just in case anything bad does actually happen. All right, so category number one should be pretty obvious. You should have some sort of defensive rifle. Now, we've got ARs here. We've got AKs here. We also have a couple things that wouldn't be considered rifles that I also think uh, would fit the bill. We've got an AR uh, pistol here. This is a, uh, an AR pistol with a 11 and a half inch barrel. Very, very effective. It would make a good defensive quote unquote rifle, even though it's not technically a rifle, it is a pistol. We also have something like this. This is a, a gun I recently purchased. I say recently, I purchased it almost a year ago. This is the Grand Power Streebog. It's a nine millimeter uh, little pistol carbine with a nine inch barrel. Uh, very, very effective. I mean, is it as effective as 7.62 or 2.23556? No, but could something like this be used as a little defensive tool? Yes. Absolutely it could, and that's basically what we're talking about here. We're talking about something that you can use in a defensive situation uh, if bad times are coming, or at the very least, if the bad times that are coming are simply that you're not going to be able to get a hold of, of anything after a certain date, uh, even if, let's say, laws come down the pipe and you have things that are grandfathered in, you want at least one thing like this somewhere in your collection. This is something that is absolutely a must-have. So that's category number one, defensive rifles. All right, so second category, obviously, if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know uh, a good, solid, reliable handgun, preferably something full-size, something with good capacity, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, it needs to be something that you're very efficient with, that you know how to run, that you have ammo for, or magazines, that you uh, can properly disassemble and clean, that you know is reliable and durable. That's what it needs to be. You need at least one solid, reliable, rugged, durable, well-maintained handgun in your collection. Uh, you know, we've got Styers, Glock, Sig, 1911, even a good revolver. Yeah, you're going to lose some capacity, but if this is what you're most proficient with, if this is what you can most easily defend yourself with, that's what you should get. Whatever it is for you, that's the basis you need to cover when it comes to choosing a handgun. And, 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 and most importantly, uh, this is the most important gun you will own. And the reason I say that is because time and time and time again, in defensive situation after defensive situation, not just in this country, but all over the world, people most often defend themselves with handguns. Why? Pretty simple. Because of its size, it is the one gun that has the capacity and ability to be there for you when you need it most in just about every situation. You can't always carry a long gun around with you, but chances are you can probably find a way to carry a handgun with you or have it near you at all times. That's why you have to have a good, solid, reliable handgun. Alright, category number three, also pretty obvious you need a good shotgun. I recommend a pump shotgun. Outside of that, just get one that's reliable. I don't care. Shotguns are pretty cheap. Um, you've got Remington 870s. This is an express model. Uh, in the before times, before COVID, uh, before the election, these were very affordable. They were about 280 bucks. We've got a uh, Mossberg 500 here. It's 500 tactical. This is about a $350 shotgun. Now, with Prices being what they are, it's probably about a $500 shotgun. We've got an old, uh, I think this is an old Stevens something or other, Stevens 67 or 66 or something like that. Just an old shotgun that uh, uh, I got from my son a long time ago. Uh, we've got a uh, Maverick 88 here that's been chopped down. 
um, and had some work done to it. But just a good shotgun that can serve as a good defensive tool, could be used as a hunting tool, could be used as a breaching tool. You never know how bad things might get, but having a good shotgun that's going to allow you to do many different things. Like, look, shotgun is not perfect at anything short of potentially bird hunting, but it's really, really good at a whole lot of things. It is a very versatile tool, and you should have one good solid shotgun in your collection. As I said, I recommend a good solid reliable pump action, but if you've got a good reliable semi-auto, great. Uh, I don't recommend brake action or anything like that, anything with a lower capacity. I, I recommend getting something with at least the ability to hold five rounds in the tube plus one in the chamber, so six overall rounds. If you can get more than that, great. Remington 870 here has an extension on it. Um, whatever you can do, but that's basically what I would recommend having. It is, uh, in my opinion, an essential firearm to have in your collection. All right, category number four, hunting rifle. Yes, that should be pretty obvious, just like most of the stuff on this list, but I want to reiterate it. You need to have a good hunting rifle, but it doesn't just need to be a good hunting rifle. It also needs to be something that, if need be, you could use as a defensive tool. Now, whatever that is for you, whether that's a lever action, a bolt action, semi-automatic, whatever, uh, that's something you should have. That's something that it should be capable of as a backup in case you need it. Even something like this, which is just a 357 carbine, but 357 coming out of an 18-inch barrel is going to do a lot of damage. It would be great as a deer hunting rifle. It would also do a lot of damage to Somebody trying to attack you if need be. That's what we're talking about here. Having something that can be dual purpose, both as a hunting rifle and as a backup defensive tool, absolutely essential. All right, and finally for category number five, yes, if you've been watching my channel for a long period of time, you know normally uh, I would put 22 in the fifth category, that you should have some sort of 22 rifle or 22 handgun or a combination of both for shit hit the fan. But that has changed in my opinion and I no longer think that is necessary. Just me personally, you may disagree, that's fine. I think the fifth category should be taken up with another handgun. As I said before, your handgun is your most important firearm because it is the one most capable of being there when you need it at all times. So you should, in my opinion, have a backup to your full-size handgun. Some sort of compact handgun. It's up to you what kind, what caliber, if you want to keep it in line with your larger gun, if you want to go with something different, you want to go with a revolver, something pocket-sized, standard compact, even something milsurp, as long as it is reliable and you have ammo for it and you know how to take care of these guns and disassemble them and clean them, it doesn't matter. Having a backup to your handgun, I think given what we were looking at politically and just civilly in our society right now is an absolute must when it comes to, to defense and worrying about you know shit at the fan or whatever it might be having a smaller but yet still very capable handgun to to back up your large handgun is absolutely 100 percent mandatory as far as i'm concerned all right guys so what you see here is my personal choices for what i would choose if i could only have five guns uh, as for uh, necessities of a collection uh, going forward into what we're looking at in the future. I know these are all very boring choices. It's fine, but Glock 17, Glock 26, AR, Mossberg 500, and a good Marlin 3030 lever action. That's what I would choose, but you have to figure out what you would choose for your five guns, for your five categories. If you don't have these categories covered, I know buying guns is hard right now. I know prices are up. Ammo's hard to find, but you need to make sure you have these bases covered. We don't know what's going to happen. I, I hope that things go well. I hope people stand up going into 2021 facing what we're probably going to face just on a societal level, a civil level, and a political level. And, and gun owners fight back, and they fight back hard and honestly and with facts and reasoning, and we win the day. I really, really hope we do. But if we don't, this is what you need to have. If you don't have it now, make sure you have it soon.